Welcome back. In the history of any iconic brand, there are always clear outliers that perfectly capture the essence and identity of that brand. And today, I want to talk about three cars that do exactly that for Aston Martin. If you're new to this series, every car company can have their design ethos boiled down to three distinct pillars. And for Aston Martin, those three pillars are number one, timelessly beautiful. It doesn't matter which generation that Aston Martin was built. It has an enduring quality of beauty that elevates it from the era when it was built. Number two, it has an understated presence. That means when it walks into a room, it has gravitas, quietly confident. And number three, a visually unique signature whether it's the grill, whether it's the headlights, whether it's its forms, whether it's its proportions, you immediately can identify the car as being nothing other than an Aston Martin. And I'll explore these three points more in detail as I work through my list of my three greatest Aston Martins. My first choice is the Aston Martin DB4 GT Zagato. Now this is a Grand Tour sports car actually designed by Zagato for Aston Martin produced between 1960 and 1963. Very few of them made during that era. It wasn't that successful but boy was this designed by Ercole Spada beautiful. One of the reasons why I love this design is because it really shows the origins of that Aston Martin grill that we all love today. This grill is starting to show the idea of capturing air a little bit further along the sides for the braking, and they combined that oval shape into the more added almost rectangles to the side of the Aston Martin grill. Then again, those beautiful headlights are still reminiscent of what we see today in Aston Martin's headlight design round, voluptuous, just like gorgeous eyes staring at you. This car here perfectly captures that two-seater sports GT look with beautiful proportions. Now there are a few elements, like I said, on this car that are the origins of today's modern day Aston Martin language. One of them being the very purposefully designed air vent between the front wheel and the front door opening. That is a very characteristic element that we still see today still very Aston Martin, and Zagato obviously embellished it a bit with their touch to it, but it stands for Aston Martin even to today. Then behind the door shut line, you have those gorgeous sensual hips flowing up and over, just the simplest of taillights integrated into the back form, lightweight looking, no fat on this vehicle at all, and then the canopy of the car, the greenhouse, located perfectly proportioned along this package, one of the other beautiful elements that we can see on this car is the power dome. That's the bulge over the hood on the front of the car that allows a little bit more space for those cam covers underneath. Gorgeously sculpted, very sensual, very beautiful, very Aston Martin. Now you might think that this is an obvious choice for me, being that it kind of resembles other cars from that era that are favorites of mine, namely the E-Type Jag, for example, other cars also. But I think what distinguishes this car, the Aston Martin DB4 GT Zagato, from the other ones is that stunning greenhouse that only belongs on an Aston Martin. Look at that belt line, how it goes back and then it kicks up and over that rear hip. It has that little jaunt, that little deviation, but that is pure Aston Martin. Nobody else does that. And for me, that greenhouse is when I see it from the side, if it was just the greenhouse, I know it's an Aston Martin and that design language was valid then, it was valid later, and it's still valid today. Now my second choice is the Aston Martin 1977 V8 Vantage. This is the British answer to the Ferrari Boxer, to the Lamborghini Countach, 
and to the Porsche 911 Turbo. If this doesn't look like Detroit iron, a Detroit muscle car, I don't know what does. This is a perfect representation of a car from UK that was the fastest, or at least one of the fastest, production cars of its era. Now, if we look at the car from the front view, I think one of the most noticeable features, one of the more interesting features, is it has this closed off hood bulge rather than an open scoop. That is what you normally would find on a, on a V8. In addition to that, they closed off the front grille and they put in two extra driving lights, twin driving lights, and they even added a spoiler to the boot lid. Now, for the life of me, I can't comprehend why they would close off the intake scoop off the hood bulge, off the power dome, or even why they would close off the grill. As I believe it, to increase the horsepower of an engine, you need to give more air, feed more air in. And by closing those intakes off, it would seem to me that you're restricting the airflow. If somebody could please answer this question, this, this curiosity I have of what I would almost call an oxymoron type of design, please do let me know. Now, as I said, this is a British Midlands muscle car, something that actually captures almost the brutality of Aston Martin's design language. There are not a lot of curves or sensuality to the design of this Vantage here because before that, the Aston Martins were soft, sensual, and all that. This one is absolutely more brutal in design terms. Now, if we're looking at it, we can still pick up a few of the Aston Martin design cues, one of them obviously being the grille. It has that S-type, S-shape form, top part to the grill, but as your eye glides back, you lose that typical bulge, emphatic bulge almost, that we have seen before. I think that's what gives a little bit more of the muscle car look that we recognize from Detroit. This is an Aston Martin done in a way that it should represent power, it should represent modern design for them, and they've done it in a way perhaps that resembles even something more like a Mach 1 Mustang. There's a tendency in this design to almost translate as something less Aston Martin, but more interesting for me because it is the odd one out. And that's why it makes it a favorite of mine because it's not predictable in many areas as an Aston Martin. I certainly believe that we can trace that modern edge of aggression back to the Aston Martin V8 Vantage because now you see it becoming a little bit more self-certain, a little bit more self-confident and before this they lacked that they were a little bit too sensual a little bit almost feminine in a certain way now with this aston martin there there's an edge of masculinity and that edge of aggression that i mentioned coming into the line and projecting more of a vision of what the aston martin vantage would become in summary i say that i would love to have a v8 vantage simply because it gives those vibes of a new step into the new language of Aston Martin design. And for me, being so distinctive and so unique in the way it looks for an Aston Martin makes it all the more desirable for me. And coming in at number three is the Aston Martin 177. Now, this car may seem quite modern, but it was actually launched at the Paris Motor Show in 2009 only 77 of them built and this car for me still looks incredibly modern to me because this car kind of takes the first one we looked at the db4 gt zagato and then it also takes the brutality of the aston martin v8 vantage and melds them together in an absolutely stunning way now look at the car from the front you can start to see that they put a lot of character into that front grille of course, it's an Aston Martin grill. We get the S-shaped top to it, and then we get that full look to the bottom of the grill. You wouldn't want to add more grill space. This is an enormous looking grill. And the other spectacular thing on the front of this car that I appreciate from a design point of view, I'm not sure how they do it from an engineering point, and that's the mystery for me that, again, I'd love to know how they do it, is the front of the car is the bumper. In other words, if you hit something with the front of the car, you're instantly damaging the hood and I guess the fenders as well. And I remember asking Henrik Fisker many years ago when he was involved with Aston Martin, leading their design team, how he managed to do that because they've done it previously also. All I got from him was a wink. That Aston Martin grill from this view is so unique, 
So Aston Martin. I absolutely love the front end of this car. Now it's no mystery to me that this 177 has won multiple design awards. Looking at it from the side view, it is easy to understand. This car reeks of power, beautiful proportions, dynamism in design, clean surfaces, exciting surfaces. Look how it sweeps back. There are a few elements that maybe could be resolved a little bit better. In my opinion, I don't like parallel lines and there's a bit of parallelism going on on the side there. But again, look at that belt line on the glass, how it kicks back and then it suddenly kicks up and over. And that is what we saw on the DB4 GT Zagato. What I especially love about this car, might seem again a small detail, is that lean, that beautiful curve they have on the rear of the door shut line coming down, sweeping slightly. It's an accelerated line, and then it just tucks in underneath and shoots forward. That line from three quarters is very hard to get right when you're designing cars. I think Aston Martin has absolutely nailed that line. Now, again, for me, one of the most gorgeous parts in this car that really defines it is those, hard to say, massive hips. It's a 177 because of those hips. And they occur, they start right behind the door shut line. That's what we saw before. They absolutely looked at the previous Aston Martins that we were speaking about to, to almost build that into their design language. Now, as we glide our eyes back to the rear three-quarter view, my gosh, have you ever seen a cleaner rear end? Absolutely identifiable for Aston Martin. I think today perhaps they would address it a little bit more differently. There's nothing fussy on the back of this car at all, just what it needs to be. And I think that transition that they've done from aggression in the front and along the side, the sensuality that they build into the rear three quarter haunch and then cleaning it all up as we get to the rear end, I think that works magnificently with this design. Great thumbs up for the design from me on this car to the Aston Martin team. Merrick, great job guys. All of this makes this car one of the most stunning Aston Martins I think that they've ever made. Holds a little bit of the inspiration from Aston Martin's history, yet it still makes a definitive shift into what a modern Aston Martin would look like for me. Now for my list of obvious honorable mentions, I would have to go with the DB5, the DB9, and obviously again, the DB10. You might have seen my recent episode about the Aston Martin Valhalla. So I guess that would give you a bit of reference to my feelings about the current state of affairs with their design values, design direction. I think they're the one mark that we have to keep our eyes on because exciting things are always coming in through the pipeline and their vision so far that I've seen lately is bang on target. Thumbs up to everything that Aston Martin is doing at the moment. They're showing a lot of confidence in their design direction. They're staying true. They're not surprising us with things that look out of place within their lineup at the moment. It is all fitting down to a great design strategy that I firmly have confidence and belief in, and I'm excited for them and their future. And there you have it, that's a wrap. My top three favorite Aston Martins. Let me know if you guys are in agreement. What are your top three? And don't forget in the description below the link, you too can get some new FS merchandise from that link. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.